Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually. So how are you doing today? It is a beautiful day in Southwest Michigan. Actually, it's really windy. This is a not a good fishing day. <laughs> Not even for wind. Wind isn't even fishing today. It's blowing like crazy out there. So anyways, keep your umbrellas uh, not out. That would be the moral of the story for today. So if you've never been here before, say hi. We are live streaming on Brother Sewing and Crafting YouTube and Facebook pages. And today we have the fabulous Heather Banks, and she is going to show you a really cool Brother machine. Maybe one that you just bought. Maybe one that you're thinking about. And I think you're going to love this. And we're going to be talking a little bit about eye broidery. So making sure that everybody can see and hear me. All right, we're in. Let's bring Heather to the party. Hi, Heather. How are Hi. you? Good, Angela. Thanks for having me today. Oh, this is a fabulous day. I love the machine that you're going to be talking about today. Me too. We're taking a little break from our normal. We talk about the Luminaire a lot. We talk about our top of the line machines. And today I thought, let's talk about some of our midline machines. So many people have them and they do so much. Plus, we're going to sneak eye broidery in too. Awesome. Awesome. So I, I actually saw you last week on the Hoop Fest, which was a lot of fun. And I was, I, you know, I've used this machine a few times, not a lot, but a few times. And uh, it's a great machine. And you forget about all the features that it has on it. You know, it's really true, Angela. This this machine does a lot. And I think sometimes we think, well, if we don't have the camera, we don't have a projector of the really high-end machines, then we don't have the machine we want. But something like the NQ1600E, which is what I have here, has so many features that I would put with a top-of-the-line high-end machine. So that's why I thought, you know, I'm going to show you some of the things that I've made with it. So I have a bunch of samples to bring out and show you those. And then I thought, well, let me show you the screen and show you some of the features and then you know maybe you are um, you have a sewing machine and you want an embroidery only machine to like stitch out in the corner while you're sewing this would be perfect maybe um, you just want to get into embroidery and this would be again a good one I, I wanted to mention again the one I'm showing you doesn't have sewing it's an embroidery only Maybe you need a travel machine so that you can go to retreats or go on vacation and take your embroidery machine, you know, leave the luminaire, take a travel embroidery machine. It's the only weighs 19 pounds. So it's so <laughs> doable. So yeah, let me show you some stuff. That's and, not and, definitely bad and you know, I was I forgot that there is an embroidery only one. I would when you said that, I'm like, wait, there's also one with sewing. <laughs> but that yes. one is just embroidery. Fantastic. Yes. So you can go combo, you know, it could, it would look basically like this, but you can sew and embroider. But I have to say, you know, as we traveled around and talked to people, so many people would say, I love having an embroidery only machine in the corner because I just push go and I let it stitch. And then I go over and I sew on my other machine and you don't have to take turns. So I highly recommend it <laughs> if you can to get an embroidery only. <laughs> I love that. Well, show us some of your favorite things on there. Okay. Let me switch cameras. It'll just take me one sec. And I'm going to show you kind of the um, the whole, make sure I pick the right one, the whole machine, just the whole shooting match for a moment. And um, let me, sorry, close that. Oh, that's okay. so cute on there. It is. It's a cute machine. I mean, they did a really good job with these machines, making them really pretty and cute. But one of the things I would, I would point out is with our really large machines, and Angela, you know this because you have one of the luminaires, it takes up a lot of table space, right? And from here to here is only uh, 27 inches. So it fits on a table really well. Um, additionally, you know, it's got this gigantic hoop. So I have to take this out and show you the hoop. So I can't even fit it in the screen. Go from bottom to top, put my hand in there. This is a six by 10 hoop. So if you have a four by four or a five by seven hoop machine, this is a awesome machine to move up to because this is one stitch, um, uh, field, excuse me. So it's not like, you know, you can only sew here or stitch here and then you have to rehoop and stitch down here. This entire thing can be stitched out at one time. So I, you know, I picked a design and then I added some fonts. This all came from this machine. I had some frames and I'll show you some more stuff I've made with it. But right off the bat, if you have at all been frustrated with, you know, I can only do four by four, five by seven. I mean, this is huge. 
Uh, so let me set that back down. So right off the bat, huge thing. Another positive, and I know it's a little hard to see right here, this has the USB drive. So what there are 198 designs in this machine, and you're not limited. And that is why, oh, I just saw uh, Arnell. Is that, <laughs> Arnell that's so I'm cute. so glad you came back. <laughs> Okay, then I'm going to talk a little bit more and, and then show you stuff, more than I was able to show you at HoopFest. But with this machine, um, you can add designs. So you're in no way limited to those 200 designs. And that's why we want to talk about iBroidery. Another fantastic feature that I did mention at HoopFest is that this machine will cut your jump stitches. And if you're not familiar with jump stitches, because maybe you're new to embroidery, as your machine moves from one stitch point to the next, if it doesn't have that ability to cut, it leaves these threads. And you can trim them, it's totally doable, but I love that it does this for me. And I can just pull it off the machine and it looks gorgeous. So right off the bat, mid-level machine with giant hoop, cuts your jump stitches, 850 stitches per minute. This is not, you know, a little tiny machine. This does a lot. So let me actually switch that and take you up close before we go over to my uh, samples and show you my screen. And I purposely left it here on this. I'm, I'm gonna go back to the beginning but one of the things I wanted to show you was that if you like to do a uh, machine quilt embroidery quilting, they have a name for it now. What is it? Quilt embroidery. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, if you like to do quilt embroidery, then, oh, cool. So is this June who just said she has it? Thank yeah. you for chiming in. With this machine, when you have your design up, if you touch the scissors, this has a little scissors here. I can turn off my jump stitches. And basically what that means is that as I'm doing my quilting, it will not cut my threads. And then I can just pull my hoop out, cut my threads automatically, and then bury them. So if you like to do that kind of quilting, it is awesome to be able to turn off the jump stitch trim and bury your threads for quilting. So let's go back so you can see some of what's in here and, and other machines like this one. So here you can see, I'm gonna scroll through some of the designs. Now we can look at these close up like this. And there are many, uh, like I said, 190 designs and they cover all different um, holidays and um, abilities. So even if you didn't add to it, I feel like you know with 200 designs, you have a lot to get started. It also has um, fonts, and I'll show you that, but let me kind of scroll through here so you can see these up close. So you get an idea of what's in this machine. There is a lot. And, oh, I uh, love that little, that butterfly is so cute. Wasn't that adorable? I know, Angela, and I mean, there's a lot of detail in these designs. I mean, check out the rows. You can. There's a lot here oh, just already from brother. Wait, right there. I have to stop you for a second because someone just said, I wish it came with smaller hoops because all my designs are smaller. I see quite a few hoops on your upper screen right there. You are correct. So that's a good point. Now, of course, I can stitch a smaller design on my large hoop, but let me pull this up so you can see how the machine tells you. So here's a rose, and you can see right here that there are these four hoops that will work with this machine. And the top one is your six by 10, this is a five by seven, this is a four by four, and this is a small one and a half by two inch. And the fact that they are all, you can see them and they're not grayed out, let me show you a comparison, that meant that I could use any of those designs with those hoops. Let's look at one. So see here, the one and a half by two and the four by four are grayed out. So I can only use the five by seven or six by 10 here. Very nice. Do all those hoops come with it, Heather, or do you, are those extra? That's a good question. And actually they do not. Those would be extra. Or if you have a previous machine that had this kind of a hoop that where you slide it in, you could use those. This okay. particular machine just comes with a six by 10. That's a great question. Thank you. Uh, so you get a decorative alphabet, all kinds of really fun stuff. You can save your designs to the embroidery, or excuse me, to a USB or to the machine. 
But let me go over to the table and show you some of my designs. I'm just gonna flip my camera. I have to remember which one it is. Haha, -ha, that was it. Okay, so <clears throat> let me flip this around so I can see. So good question about the four by four and five by seven hoop. And right here are two hoops that I could use with it. So if I had a four by four, five by seven that have this particular sliding mechanism, these can absolutely be used with it. That isn't a problem. Let me show you a couple things that came directly from the machine. So this is um, obviously a quilt, um, I'm sorry, a, a uh, label. I, I completely blanked for a minute there. A quilt <laughs> label. And you can see how each of these colors are different. In the screen, we have the ability to do this where you have, you pick anything and you can change each different letter to um, a different color. And that is one of my favorite things. This whole thing was made in that machine, made in the 1600. And I think this is, you know, something I could easily put on a quilt and I was able to make with it. Here is an example of a cute little built, again, built-in design. This is an applique with the beautiful embroidery that goes over the applique, or sorry, this was the fill only. Here is it as an applique. And these just came from the machine. Here's another example. This is a cute girl's bow. And both of these came from the machine. So small designs, you know, for your one and a half by two inch hoop. This is metallic thread. And, you know, brother machines do great with metallic thread. So no issues there. Here's another built-in design that I just created in sort of a mug rug kind of a uh, something there. Now here's something larger. This was made in the six by 10 inch hoop. This is included in the machine. And then I added in my font because one of the features of our beautiful mid-level machines like you see there is you can take a design and add to it. So I took the home sweet home, added that in. That's I'll so cute, Heather. Isn't this fun and cute? I know. I'm thinking um, like front door, <laughs> something to hang on the front door. Yeah. Here is a super cute snowman design. Now this is in the machine and I stitched it in a variegated thread. So if you're kind of thinking of looking for ideas, but look what it transforms into when it gets really added on. So I added font, I added frames that are built in and someone at Quilt Fe or Hoop Fest had asked me the meander, I just quilted separate once it came off the machine, but you can kind of get an idea of, of something large. And this one I just made before Hoop Fest, and I'm thinking I'm gonna hang this um, probably on the front door. This is an included design, just like the others. So this is in the machine, added my um, initial. And I wanted to show you in the hoop, in case you're wondering, because remember how I said, this does not come with the camera or the projector. So what you can do is use, I'm trying to get, so you can see this. How's that, Angela? Can you see these? Oh, yes. We can see that great. Perfect. So there's four of them in all four sides of your hoop. And what you can do is, and this is what I did with my banner, is that I took, I took my uh, center design and I extended it to all four edges. And then when you place this in your hoop, now in this case, I used a sticky back stabilizer because I just wanted my design to sit on top. Let me move that over. I just wanted this to sit on top. And I took the edges that extended and I lined them up with these um, extensions in the hoop. So I was able to move this over and then I was able to look on this side and line it up, line this one up with the bottom and the top. And then I knew that this was perfectly centered. So this is one way that you can easily line things up in the hoop just by extending your lines and then matching up with these notches on either side of your hoop. Another way is that it is this is hard to show you on camera, but it is a clear plastic grid and it shows the stitch field. So I can see how big my designs can be. It fits in and then it has hole in the middle so I could make a mark in the middle of my design and I would know exactly where to place it. And I would also know if I'm extending beyond my stitch field. 
So, you know, brother really does set you up for success with these hoops, even if they, in these machines, they don't have to have a camera projector. Those are, you know, really nice to have and we love them, but we can absolutely do things really, really well without them. So any anything I'm missing there, Angela, before I move on to something a little different? No, but I love that little plastic insert. I still use mine with yes. all of my hoops when I'm trying to just, sometimes I just like to hoop it just perfectly or my design yes. has to be so close to the edge of the hoop that I don't have a lot of wiggle room. I yes. use that all the time. I love it. That's, me too, right? I mean, this tells you exactly what, as far as your design can go out. So, oops, I think I'm backwards. Um, so that's perfect. And I love that there's little holes so I can actually come in here and make notes about, you know, where I want to center stuff and make it straight. So yeah, yeah for sure. Me too. Very oh fun. See how I put it onto my flag. So if you have a design that doesn't have Disney and you're thinking, you know, but I might want maybe just more than Disney, but Marvel, Star Wars. Well, that is why Brother has iBroidery. And here is an example of one of the newest designs on iBroidery. And it's the Cruella de Vil. Oh and my I, gosh. Isn't That's that cute? So cute, Heather. <laughs> I know, I loved it. And it's just like a little mat for a little mug rug. But I stitched the whole thing on the 1600. You can see the alternating colors, just like I showed you where with my quilt label. And then these fonts are included. Now, I purposely didn't trim these, Angela. See my little um, tiny jump stitches in between sewing room? Um, this, oh, hold on. Let me, let me put my binoculars on. <laughs> <laughs> this is right. It's so small. So I that's what I was going to say. Just barely. If you really point it out, I can just barely. So guess what? My Alexa app's going off. Could you hear that? All right. <laughs> Hopefully she's done now. All right. Exactly. They're so tiny. And, you know, this was pointed out to me that when they do this between letters, now I can go in there and trim those, but this is actually just an industry standard. If you look at things that are embroidered out there, it's very common to leave those and they're just so little. So I just didn't want anyone to feel bad if they thought, well, you know, I just leave those because me too. I think this looks fabulous. I well, love you it. You can't see them. And also, same thing what you just said, Heather. I uh, just heard, and I've heard this for years, but <laughs> I tested it myself. If you <laughs> embroider a bunch of little letters and you cut those jump stitches and it's on like a flimsier fabric, all of a sudden your letter that might have been a nice line looks more like uh, the, I don't know, flowing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The flowing something. I don't know, but they're not straight. Let's just go with that. <laughs> exactly. You're so right. You know, this makes it look more precise, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Good point. So here are some designs that you can take from iBroidery.com. Now this was a little bit when we were still into wearing some masks more, but oh. here's a cute, cute little, um, guy from frozen. I'm blanking on his name, but, uh, so there's uh, an example. I did show these the other day and I haven't put them together yet because it's so easy to show people when they're in these squares. But oh, these I love those Star Wars. I turned those into a tic-tac-toe game. I made them like little circles. Oh, that's an awesome idea, Angela. I didn't even think yeah. about that. <laughs> yep. So there there's Marvel, there's Star Wars. And if you want Star Wars designs, then all you have to do is go to iBroidery and you can register your brother machine. And we are going to talk about how to do that more. But this is just giving you an idea. Here oh is God. an Great. adorable kid's sweatshirt with a Winnie the Pooh. Uh, so super, you know, fast, easy. All of these can be done on your mid-level. Here's a patch, a Disney patch. Oh that I made and I put some on girls jeans with or shorts with a little bling. Something oh my gosh, else. that's adorable. Did you actually <laughs> go back to those shorts? Okay. I have to ask. Did you actually add that trim at the bottom? Because yeah, that did. is so stinking cute. I did. I used the brother ruffler and then all I did was surge the edge so that it wouldn't fray. And then I I just I mean you can see the green line. That's me adding the the trim. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. <laughs> Adorable. Thank you. I loved it. And I loved adding the little rhinestones. And then I just made a little patch. This was easily made in a four by four hoop. You don't need anything fancy. Um, you know, for some cute little girl in your life, easy to do. Oh, I love that. Uh, 
And let's see, just because I always show Star Wars, here are some Spider-Man. Now, this would fit in a 5x7 hoop, and this would fit in a 4x4. I have a couple that would exceed the 6x10, but I wanted you to see, I mean, I don't know. I'm oh not a big gosh. fan of Star Wars and stuff, or Marvel, but he must have a name, right? I know he's a, something in there. <laughs> we'll have to ask the Brother fans to help us out. I mean, I know that's Spider-Man, but... <laughs> Yeah, we know the Spider-Man, but I'm not sure what villain this is. But, I mean, and look at this. Let me show you this. This is 100% fill, and look at how easily I can bend this. Oh, my God. This is not bulletproof. You can use this in a quilt, in a coat, a jacket, and it's look at the beautiful how beautiful it is from the back. Is that a ap mixture of applique and embroidery? None. There's no applique in this. Oh, my gosh. I'm looking at that. I'm going to bring you up even bigger. Okay. That is, that looks like a painting or fabric or something. Oh my gosh. Oh, Glenda it's, says it's Olaf. Oh, oh, Olaf was the, thank you for giving me the snowman. Thank you. Um, this is just gorgeous, right? I mean, it's not pretty per se because it's one of the monsters, but for a full um, embroidered design to be able to easily do this and have this quality, I mean, put this on anything, bedding, and you're not going to feel the stiffness. That I'm is not, amazing. I might have nightmares if it's on my bedding. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Me too. <laughs> Here's another Spider-Man. Now, this one I can identify. Again, larger than your 6x10. Um, here's another in the Marvel series. And I'm wanting you to get an idea of what's available on embroidery. And this is so, pr again, you know, it's a scary guy, but so pretty, very, even though it's all 100% embroidery, very lightweight um, black suit Spider-Man. I hadn't heard of that, but I'm just not enough of a comic book fan, I think. So how and, long how yeah. long does it take to embroider one of these, by the way? And by the way, the what the designs that she's so showing now are from iBroidery, and I'll bring that up here in a minute. So that means anyone with a brother machine can download these. Is that correct? That is 100% correct. If you like any of these designs I'm showing you and you have a brother machine, go get them. <laughs> They're all available to you. Oh, my gosh. Those are cool. Green Look. Goblin. Now, this one I knew. Pretty sure. I'm, just, I'm still I'm getting wrong. over how. I mean, I'm looking at you through a camera online live, which usually is a little blurry, and that looks like a painting or a poster. It does, and yet not one bit of applique, but it's easily manipulated and not heavy and you know crazy dense. So wow. all of these are beautiful. Here's a fun. I did show this on Hoop Fest, I believe. This is just a fun take on all of the different characters, you know, the Incredible Hulk. They even let you have the Avenger logo. And I made this as a patch and then stitched it so it hung off the bottom. Oh, that's cool. But just, you know, Hank, where could you put this in a fun place? Like, this would be a really cute long pillow. I think I would, I would enjoy that. Here is one more, and this is where I took a lot of the small four inch by four inch designs that were Spider Man. So, if you only have a four by four hoop, no problem as long as it's a brother machine. And what I did to like spice up the fact that I had these five designs was I went and just you know got some Spider Man fabric and then I intermixed it, and it feels like it's fancier than it is, right? <laughs> it's just some designs with fabric. That's really cool. Yeah. And again, really soft. This is not a bulletproof, difficult to move thing. If this were larger and I wanted to put it on someone's bed, I could easily do that and they wouldn't be uncomfortable. It's not scratchy and, and, or itchy. So all of these things are available to you on iBroidery.com. So let me switch cameras and we can talk. Maybe we could go to the iBroidery site, Angela, and look at them more. That sounds good. And also, there's a few questions for you because everyone's like, they cannot believe, well, I can't either, believe how soft and flowy those that fabric is. And uh, a couple of people want to know what stabilizer you used. Oh, that's a great question. Actually, I have some right here, and it looks like this. Oh, it is brother, or in other words, they call it pace setter. So make sure I'm getting this in there. Pace setter, medium weight, fusible cutaway. And this is what it looks like. 
and it's uh, as it stays on the package it's got that shiny on one side because this is the fusible and this is the non it is cut away there's no ripping this but you can see how very soft this is and i use this for anything quilting that i don't want to be thick and uh you know stiff like maybe a a strong paper tear or cutaway might be that's not the case here so medium cutaway Yes, medium weight fusible cutaway. And what we would call, you know, when we use our jargon, like a no-show mesh, but it has a fusible on one side. And actually the fabric that I had underneath here, here we go, that I'm getting ready to, to uh, embroider with, here's just a, a like a cream colored denim. And I have fused that fusible on the back so that it's ready to go to my machine and, and hoops. So, that is, I use this so much. I mean, this is like pretty much my number one use. It works so well for everything. So that that's was awesome. So just while you're at that table with those, there's just two more questions for you on those. Sure. So uh, Tina's saying, so you leave the stabilizer in or do you just cut it right around the edge of the design? Well, that's a good question. So this is on the back and I have left it in completely. And that's good that I hadn't finished these so you can see. Uh, <laughs> perfect. I know, perfect. Now this one I included batting. So it kind of depends on what you're gonna do with them. And again, if they're going into a quilt, this is a super thin, I'm trying to peel it away, a super thin um, stabilizer batting. And you know how they make some stable or battings that can be also used as stabilizer? Mm -hmm. I do not cut away, I'm trying to go through my different things. I do not cut away my stabilizer. I leave it in because again, my point was that it's just so soft. It doesn't need to go anywhere and it's great. It's just part of my quilt block. That's awesome. And then while you're there about your, um, the patches that you said you attached to that one quilt, did, but yes, you had right. that whole thing, did you, or did you attach them as patches? Uh, oh. was it this one or? I don't know, Karen, which one are you referring to? Do uh, Which one has patches or which one has applique? This one had a patch. So the Avengers here is a patch. And oh, okay. And so maybe if she's asking, we can ask her for two. But what I did here was I made the patch. So just like these jeans where I made a patch. And then what I did was I separately um, stitched it down. So this has a line of stitching with a mo poly monofilament, you know, it's like a clear thread right on the inside just to keep it down. Now you could have also make your patch with a, a fusible on the back and that would help keep it there. But um, I love this because it's three dimensional and it hangs off the quilt and people always kind of touch it and go, ooh, you know, how'd you get another element on there? That was fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Anything else I can answer? Uh, some, of asking, these, some of these. She was asking about the Spider-Man quilt. Oh, say that one more time. Sorry. She was asking about that quilt right there. This quilt. Okay. So uh, in actuality, none of these are patches. These are all, so let me bring this up. These are all just built-in designs. And again, this, I just can't get over how this is a fully stitched um, design, but yet no, no, no fabric applique, but look how much it moves. But in this case, for each one of these, I stitched the design and then I added a fabric quilted background. So now this wouldn't come in our mid-level. However, if you own, you know, it's very, you can definitely buy quilted backgrounds and then you would just quilt the, stitch the quilted background and then do the design on top of it. That so. is absolutely gorgeous, Heather. Absolutely. Karen, I was with you. I was looking at it thinking, oh, she must have done that as an applique because it looks so good. <laughs> It's just fun. And of course, I have to make small things in general to travel with, but I would love to have something like this, like in a kid's bed size quilt. Again, utilizing all the fun novelty fabrics on the market with embroidery designs. Oh, that. <laughs> uh, Debbie, wa Debbie wants you to, uh, can you come to my house and teach me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll be right there. Do you serve breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have coffee? <laughs> Exactly. What what else can we do? I always say, you know, as long as you cook, it's a deal. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so should we look at embroidery or eye embroidery a little more now? Yeah, come on up back up okay. here because, I'll and I'll answer a couple questions while you're switching your cameras. So, someone asked, are these designs with the Marvel and all of that? Can you sell those? No, you can only use them for personal use. And I'll show you exactly where you can pick them up. 
and it's at iBroidery. You can see the website right there, iBroidery.com. Let me bring this up. There you go. And I'm going to bring up that website. So you basically, they do have free designs of the month. The Marvel are not free, but they're not very expensive either, comparatively speaking. Right. And someone said, what software did you use to get that? You did not. None. You downloaded it. So let me um, share the screen real quick so you can see what this looks like if you've never been there. Make sure I got the right one. <laughs> you never know what's going to pop up here. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. <laughs> Sewing or fishing, who knows? Okay, <laughs> so let me make this a little bit bigger. Oh, there's Cinderella ones now. Oh, yes, there are. Guess what I'm getting when we're done with the show. <laughs> oh, those are so precious. So this is the website Then you can see I listed it below. And go ahead. You want to walk us through because I, I don't want to over talk you. So no, you go right ahead, Angela. I know you know all about this, too. Um, if, if you scroll down to the very bottom, I think they'll see our free design of the month. If you keep going up, uh, there it is. Bottom left work. corner. Oh, right here. Yes. So free, and, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, so every month you can get one free design at least that doesn't cost you anything that's really well digitized. And this is this month's right there. Uh, if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see, you know, obviously that they're they're showing you where to get the Star Wars. And, and also, do you see in the right hand corner, there is a little video. So if you um, want a little bit of uh, extra tips on downloading these designs, Brothers tried to help you out. Um, scroll back up the screen, Angela, if you would. By the way, before I go up there, this is the, the free design of the month. So Brothers Blog is back up, and Joanne Banco has a project with the free design of the month, or at least a tutorial about it, or she has something with the free design every month on the blog. So you can actually go to past ones. Some of those designs are still free, some are not, but you want to keep up to date every month with those freebies because it's awesome. Absolutely. I mean, go, like you just said, maybe they're not free anymore. So at least collect the free ones every month while they are and mm -hmm. store those. And pretty soon you'll have a huge, you know, file of freebies just that, like you said, <laughs> coordinate with Joanne. Yeah. Freebies. We love freebies. <laughs> That's Look right. Me too. Categories. So let's press view all, Angela, so they can see all the categories um, on the right uh, above. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, there are more than 5,000 5, designs on, on iBroidery. And it's not just, even though we love the licensed stuff like the Marvel and Disney, it also has so many other things. Do you know Anita Good Design puts designs on here? Uh, oh, God, look at the, the animals. I love that frog. I'm a big reptile person. I <laughs> love eagle. that. Oh, my gosh. This is awesome. So when so then what you have to do, though, is you have to click on a category to get to the rest of them. So that, that's um, – here's the Disney, and then here's yes. all the rest of the Disney. So you have to – you might go to that page and go, I don't see that many designs. <laughs> click and on then, those. Those are subcategories to show you all of them. Click. Oh, there you go. Okay. So you went into, isn't this the baby? Super oh. cute. And notice when Angela slides over the design, it gives you more info. So it tells you the size, the stitch count, the number of colors. And we should say right up front that any of the licensed products, you can't actually alter the size. It's part of the licensing agreement with Disney and they, they require the sizes to stay as they are. So if you download these to your machine and you try to size them up, don't be discouraged or frustrated. That's just how they, that's their rule. It's just their rule. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. Now, Angela, if you look over on the left side where it says filter, First off, we just see all of the different categories, and there's a lot. But if you scroll down farther, there are two other filter options. So if you were looking for things that would work with just your machine, you can pick your machine and then do a search. If you want to narrow it down farther and you see hoop size, you oh, can here's say, the machine. You have to open it, by the way. Yes. That's what all it's opened. It's closed, and you just open it, and then you pick your machine. That's perfect. So then you're not you're not ooing over some design that won't fit on your machine. That's perfect, right? Exactly. I I mean that's a great option. And and we have as you're scrolling, can you see how many machines? If you were worried, oh, they're not going to have my machine. They're yeah. all here. 
it's wow. Well, there's a lot of machines there. Holy cow. Yeah. And if you keep going, then you'll see hoop size. And say, let's, for instance, you have a four by four hoop and that's as big as you can go. Well, you click four by four and filter designs and it will show you all the designs for that category. Keep in mind, Angela's in a specific category. So you, you choose a category and then filter. So, um, and it pretty much, you know, everything's going to show up for your four by four uh, or so many designs. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say everything, but it lets you filter out. Maybe you have the 10 and five, eight by 16 inch hoop and you want to see what'll fit in there. Oh, I just love these designs. Every time I'm on here, I'm like, I need that one. And I need that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. This Super. is cute. So all of these right now, cause I just picked what I did is I went up and picked just a few different categories. You can pick all of them if you want to. And then I chose, I didn't choose a specific machine, but I did choose a four by four hoop, which you can see. And look at all the designs that will fit in a four by four hoop. So many. And you can add. So <laughs> Put a couple of them in there. You know, if you think one's not enough, it maybe it's too small, throw in another poo bear, you know, and you've got two with a, with a monogram or a name. Oh, these are so cute. Oh, those are adorable. Oh, these are, these are really adorable. And you don't see these anywhere, right, Angela? I mean, this is a, this is a hidden treasure of brother with their 5,000, more than 5,000 designs. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. That's pretty much what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. Oh my gosh, these are adorable. So this is just three categories that I chose and there's pages, five pages. Mm -hmm. Oh, are these cute? <gasps> oh, those are, oh, I love those. I hadn't seen those candy cane. Those are, oh, look at that mini. I love that one. This, this is what happens. Alive. I can't get off the site because I see so many more that I want. Oh, that's cute. This is awesome. So Angela, if you're, when you're right there, will you push add to cart with one of those? Sure. Oh, it. that's a cute one. Let's oh, go ahead yeah. and add it to a cart. Okay. All right. So I'm now, in right now, but it did go in, right? Let's see. So what we're going to kind of do, and Angela, we're still good with pulling that Let's other see. one up. Yeah, you can okay. see right here, it shows you it's in your cart. I haven't logged in yet, yep. um, but it shows me here. Uh, do you want to continue shopping or create an account? Do you want me to bring up your other uh, screen? Yeah, exactly, because see right there where Angela has the choice for create an account. We wanted to give you an idea of basically what you need to do. And one of the hard things about doing this is, if we bring up all that information, it shows all kinds of machine stuff that we can't show online. You know, we we don't want to put out all our machine numbers to the world. So what we did was created a very short little thing to direct, to put you put you through to let you see right now to show give you an idea of how easy it is to do this. So Angela is going to pull that up in a second, and what we're going to do is show you. Perfect. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> it is a super, super awesome PowerPoint. <laughs> I guess we are. It is. It got. Yeah. Like the fireworks show. Exactly. <laughs> Norma and Steve. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, we're not trying to get you in trouble. I promise. <laughs> Okay, so if when you start out here, you are going to see that it gives you an opportunity to create an account. And I wanna show you why that's important. And yeah, go right ahead, Angela. So the next screen is just your normal stuff. You've seen this a million times to create an account, you know, name, address, et cetera. So go ahead and keep going. And I want you to see, you're gonna, just what Angela did, you'll go through your categories and then go ahead to the next one. You'll okay. pick one you like and add it to cart. So go ahead and choose the next one, Angela, and I'll show you something about the designs. Um, Let me just bring the whole one up. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, I thought it was full screen and it was not. So here we go. We're back to your presentation. Oh, so here's where first okay. time customer. So first time customer, you don't have an account with iBroidery yet. You're just going to give your basic info. Nothing secret or hard here. So then we go to the next page. Now, at this point, you have an account, but in order to purchase a design off embroidery, you must have a brother machine and you must associate it with your with all of your designs that you buy. So go ahead and go to the next screen, Angela, if you would. Now, here's a design I picked and I'm adding it to my cart. So let's go to the next screen. All right. First of all, notice that when you look at a design, even before I add it to my cart, 
excuse me, you get a ton of info. So on the far right, you can see the how high and wide it is, the stitch count, and how many color changes there will be. The threads show you all nine of those colors. Now it's a little cut off because I cut it off, but it gives you this in, in brother thread. So there are um, conversion charts so that you can convert this to your favorite kind of thread, but you get an idea at least, you know, of the, kind, of the colors you need. Now look out in the between and it says for use with. So double check here and find your machine. This list is even longer. Like I said, it got cut off, but brother really wants to meet you to make sure that this will work for your machine. And it has the price. I kind of cut my price off, but you can see that. So go ahead and go to the next one, Angela, if you would. Now, I went ahead and showed you that in this screen, you can still expand the model list. So it's huge. All of those machines, will this design will work with. Uh, go ahead and go to the next screen because it's without that drop. Oh, go uh, ahead. Was that a cat? A cat? Where? Did something just go across your screen? <laughs> I don't know. Did it? <laughs> I'm a little worried if it did. I don't have a cat. <laughs> oh, Angela, there's a, there's a bug on my screen. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so funny. I was like, Heather, what's up with your cat? <laughs> it's a bug. It has wings, and it's, pro it's controlling my screen. We'll see if it comes back. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Thank you. This is exactly... So who think really important to know, I, I like boxed it and circled it. All downloads need to be associated with to a model before you can check out. So it will not allow you to purchase the machine or to purchase the design until you've associated with a model. See on the right side where it says register a machine. That's what you're going to click on. So I'm going to push register machine and then go to the next screen. And here you'll see select your model. There was a, you know, as you saw, a huge list. On the right at the top, you can see my three machines that I have already registered. You can make a machine inactive. You know, like I sold my machine, I'm just gonna inactivate it. But all three, the 1600, the Luminaire, and the Dream Machine are active. And, and if you look right below that, see how it says a machine can be assigned to new designs because it's active. Super. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And if you go to the next screen, please. Here's what you need to know. You need to pick your model. You'll get the serial number from the back of the machine. Your machine number is, and I can show you that in here, but it is in your um, screens when you're looking at your, um, your different settings, the date purchased and where you bought it. So if you've been wondering, like, what do I need to know to register? These are the things, not very much. Uh, let's go to the next one. Once I've put that in, I have an account. So notice how you can go to your account page and it lets you edit the machines. You can add or take them out. It lets you look at your downloads and it lets you change your designs to a different machine. So maybe I purchased my Cruella de Vil and I associated it with my 1600, but I also want to stitch it out on my Luminaire. Go ahead and go to the next screen, Angela. Cool. All right. Here's my Cruella. Do you see that it is tied to my Luminaire? And then it had a machine number. And then also it has the date I did all of this. Now notice on the far right, all I had to do was click add model and select different model. Let's go to the next screen. And here's my other machines. I already associated them. I've already put them in. So I said, okay, it's on the Luminaire. I'm going to pick the 1600. So let's do that one more screen. And here it is, save changes, and one more screen, and there you go. So see that I have associated my Cruella design with my three machines. Now, all I have to do is push download, and it'll just download to my computer, put it on a USB, and put it in my machine. Now, I know this is quick, and uh, but the good thing is this stays up, right, Angela, so people can come back? Mm -hmm. Great. That's nice because also all of your designs are held in there. So if your computer crashes or you lost your USB stick, you can go back in there. <laughs> as many times as you want. Yeah, they're all there. So I think that was the last one. Am I wrong? Yep. Nope, you're okay. right. So mostly what we wanted to do with that is usually it's so hard to show you that online because of all the model numbers and all that stuff that comes up. So this way we were able to just give it to you in a really brief example. 
eye embroidery, like I said, has so much. Now let me switch really quick to my screen so that you can see what it looks like when I pull up one of my embroidery designs. I think it's wrong one, this one. <laughs> All right, so I have my USB in the machine and it's saved, I saved my Cruella. So I'm going to go to the flash drive and I'm going to scroll through my designs. I have several embroidery here. Let's go ahead and pull up the Cruella and let me show it to you large. So here's what it looks like. And you can see that it will fit in any of these three hoops, six by 10, five by seven, or four by four. I like it. I'm going to push set. Now I can add to this. I have a couple other, oh my gosh, I saw these the other day and I just thought they were so cute on embroidery. Look at this Minnie Mouse cotton candy, Angela. Oh my gosh, check that out. Oops, I'm just seeing it on top of my Cruella DeVille. Hold on. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's, let's figure this out really quick because it's so cute. Um, all right, let me go back. Here's the hamburger. Let me show you that. Oh, it's still showing up on here. I'm going to move it. Okay. So here's my Cruella and here's my hamburger. And now both of these came from iBroidery and I just thought they were so fun and cute. Um, let me get rid of my Cruella DeVille. Pull this up. I mean, isn't that just adorable? The Minnie Mouse hamburger. <laughs> okay, I've not seen that one. That is cute. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. It's just cute. So anyways, once you get a design up, that's as, as hard or as easy it is. Now, this design has been saved to this machine, or sorry, to the flash drive, but I can also save it to my machine. So I don't need to use the USB anymore. In the future, when I want to pull up that hamburger, it will just be in my machine. Now I'm oh, done. I can wipe clean out my, uh, oops, clean out my uh, flash drive and there we go. Perfect. Okay. So what do you think? Uh, um, now I can, like I said, let me go back a screen, do as much adding as I want to this as with the advantage of the six by 10 hoop, you can add a lot. So let's say I want to add a monogram. I'm gonna move that up a little bit and I can edit. Remember that multicolor I kept talking about? Let's change the color of my letters so that they can be all different. Um, and just like that, you can have something with multicolors. I can change lots of things with my font. Actually, um, I can just change if maybe I don't like that one. Yeah. I like that one better or I like this one better. You can change your font. You can change the size. So I can make these bigger or smaller. Um, there's, there's just so much you can do right here in the hoop that you can actually see very easily since it's full color and uh, you can make it quite large. So when I'm done and I want to, uh, and I want to actually stitch this out, this button right here will also help you know where your uh, design fits in the hoop. And when you push this, it will trace around the four corners and it will show you on your uh, fabric exactly where it will stitch. Another way to place on your frame. So That's such an easy way to mark your design. I love that. Yes, there's just so much. And again, you don't have to be done. As long as there's room in the hoop, you can continue to add things to your hoop. And it's all a touch screen. So, you know, as long, and actually this is even bigger. I have the whole thing. So now you can see I've added three things. So the six by 10 hoop really opens up your designs. You can mirror image there, change colors. There's just a lot. If you have had a black and white screen in the past, then you know it can be a little more difficult to see what you're working on. And you may not want to look, I can go up to 300% on my screen. You may not want to work on your, your, um, your screen if you have a black and white one, but with this, no problem. Yeah, and that is kind of everything in a nutshell, whoops, except me coming back in there, uh, that we have been, that I had wanted to talk to you about. Is there anything I may be missing, Angela? Yeah, there was just a few questions. So someone said, what if they bought a used machine and it already says that it's been registered? Any idea? They probably should call Brother 
care if they can't get it registered? Yeah, that's, oh, that's a very good question. That's a good that study is. educator question. Um, I would say call the 1-800-BROTHER number and ask them. I would guess that they're able to maybe remove that and switch it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Teresa says, aren't all Brother Machines PES designs? Are they coded for each machine? Or can you download one and actually use it amongst the other machines? That's a good question. That is a great question, Teresa. Thank you for bringing it up because I had it in my notes and I forgot to mention it. So gold star. Um, so good question. The, the uh, designs that are licensed, the Marvel, the Disney, the Frozen, all of those, those that are licensed, they are encrypted. And that's why they can only be uh, assigned to one machine. And instead of a PES, they are a PEN. And I know that's very different and it was hard to get adjusted to for me in my brain. It's like, wait a second, this is a PEN, but it's because they're encrypted and can't be shared that way. And that's why they only work on one machine. So if I took my USB out for that hamburger and I went and put it into one of the machines it's not registered with, even though it's mine, it just will say that there's nothing there. It won't show up at all. So with most of the machine designs on iBroidery, if they're just a PES because they're not licensed, mm -hmm. no problem. But um, these uh, definitely the license can only go to one machine. Yeah, definitely. Hi, Marsha. Nice to see you. So this kind of covers what you showed where you could just add additional machines to any design. So yes, you sure can, Marsha. Yes, for sure. A very good question. question. There's a few questions. Someone from Canada said that they have, well, it says embroidery on there. It says USA only. Can Do you know if they have a different system or um, something? That is a good question. And I had heard I had heard something yesterday. Someone said something about not being able to get them in the UK. Um, we may have to research that further. Uh, I didn't realize that they would be limited. And there may be a Canadian version. We, we probably would have to check. I'd have to check too. I don't know that. I, I didn't know that one off the top of my head. So sorry, I can't give you an answer. But yeah. uh, Sylvie, if you also, if you want to call the brother hotline, you'll know too. Yes. You'll know. Yep. For sure. They know everything. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They know everything. Uh, let's see. Stephen Norma want to know if you have a small, smaller machine, will it still let you get the large, the bigger size embroidery? Oh, that's interesting. Or are you limited to the hoop the machine has? Let me show you that. I can actually show you that exact example of that. Oh, I keep picking the wrong one. Okay, so in this um, machine, I have, well, at some point I will get the one that's the close up. All right, in this machine with the uh, USB that I have, if I pull mm -hmm. that up, I happen to know that I have a design in here that doesn't fit. Do you see how these four are gray? It's because of that. Now, if I push this design that says boxer, do you see how my designs are grayed out? It's because they're bigger, it says right there, it's too big for the frame I have. So if you try to and bring one in that's too big, it will tell you. And if you try to buy one on, um, it, uh, I guess on, I, I'm trying to think on iBroidery if it will tell you. I think you have to do have to check that with what the models are that are compatible. But if you try to bring in something that doesn't work with your machine, they tend to be grayed out. Yeah. And uh, Lois, it will depend, like, as she just mentioned, if you have a um, like a Marvel design or a Disney design or license design, then you will have to register both machines. Otherwise, probably not. Uh, oh, yes, just register both of them. It's super fast and easy. It really is. That's why I tried to do the quick PowerPoint. It's just a matter of plugging in your, your numbers. Yeah. And I think this is Carol. Does uh, the NQ1600E come with a stylus? <laughs> I don't have it in front of me, but it does. A little plastic stylus, yes. <laughs> I always lose mine. Well, I don't lose them. I, I actually misplace them, and then I find a whole little pile of, like, five of them because I must put them in the same spot. My brain must be... <laughs> Exactly. Set stylus right here, and you will not find it until there's a minimum of four together. <laughs> <laughs> they attract each other or they multiply. I'm not sure. But absolutely, totally. yes. <laughs> oh, Deborah, yes, you can go back. And anybody that joined in late, you can always go back and watch these episodes. We are live on Brother Sews and Brother Crafting Facebook and YouTube pages. You can go binge watch. I always watch the YouTube version, and I, I uh, take it from my phone up onto the TV, sit yes. back at the big screen. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> All right, I saw a few more. Oh, I know. Oh, Lisa, congratulations. She just bought this machine. 
Ah, congrats, Lisa. Good for you. Oh, yeah, Joe, has a question. Oh, never apologize. You can ask as many questions as you want. Are, uh, does this can this be used with the scanning cut? Or Absolutely. not? Yeah, if you have a, an applique design, you could certainly, and this, this particular machine has appliques built in, all I have to do is save it to a flash drive and open it up in the Scan & Cut, because your Scan & Cut DX can read your PES files. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Teresa wants to know, does it have a basting stitch? It doesn't, Teresa. I am sorry. However, what it does have, and this is a really great sheet, which I like to use, so I'm going to switch back really quick. I think I can remember which one it was. Oh, brother, thank you. Uh, Patricia, what did brother say? Phone number for you. Oh, perfect. Okay. So if you see how we have frames, well, see how there's square and all different shapes. I have used these as a basting stitch. Now, granted, it's not as long of a stitch. So there could be some more, you know, getting the stitch out might not work quite as well as a basting stitch. But what you can do is add in one of the frames and let me push uh, just the straight one. Nothing's fancy. Uh, I think I want this. No, that's a triple. If I just come here and set, and then I size this up, you can use that as a basting stitch. And uh, especially if you're going to cut it away after you're done. So there is a little bit of a work around there, and it does it does work, but it's not an actual true uh, basting stitch. Gotcha. All right, Teresa has another question. Uh, when you first start a new thread, do you need to initial thread? Do you need to cut your initial thread tail? That's a personal preference usually. But yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Do you mean as it starts to stitch away and then cut? I'm it? thinking that's what she's talking about. You know, you, you pull can. it to the top. Yeah, that's up to you. Totally up to you. You can if you want to, Teresa. Definitely. <laughs> oh, Andrea says she has this machine. You're so welcome for all the info. Yes, yay. And you're on I'm YouTube, so, so be sure to, um, you can, well, first of all, you can like this video, subscribe to Brother Sews, and I think you can actually hit share or save to watch later. Uh, so you save this video and you go back, like a year from now, if you're <laughs> working on something, you're like, I can't remember. Exactly. <laughs> uh, great tip, I agree. I think that's, let's see. Kind Here's of one. everyone's questions. Yeah, there's one more. I could use a fusible thread as a basting stitch uh, and then iron it away. I haven't what? tried it, but it sounds intriguing. I have not tried that either. Uh, I would certainly give it a shot. Oh, Josie, you got a brand spanking new Stellaire. Congrats. Woohoo. A lot Good of people bought this week. It's Christmas in July. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, awesome Heather, machine. this was a great tutorial. I think you got everyone's questions, but don't worry. Even if you're watching the replay, you can always leave comments on YouTube or Facebook. Brother always goes back, and if they can't answer it, they send it to us, and we try to answer. Um, but this was a great informational show. Um, I also put down below Brother's website because the blogs are back, the crafting and the sewing yes. blogs. And be sure to follow us on Instagram. We'd love to see what you're working on. Heather. Always. Your samples were awesome. I still, I got to pull, I have to go pull out those uh, Disney ones that I turned in, the little Star Wars ones. I just turned them, they kind of like a little circle mug rugs, and I turned them into tic-tac-toe. They're so fun. And that I always bring funny. them out when, when the nephews and uh, nieces come over. I would love to see that, Angela. You're going to have to show that next time. That's very creative. <laughs> it was just something, you know, you're trying to think, what could I possibly do with chalk on a driveway, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, thank okay. you, Carol. Yeah, Josie, that does work. Um, here's just one last quick question. Uh, Timothy says, do any of the patterns do split hop? I have the SE625 that has two hop sizes. Um, that is a good question. And I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent on that answer. Um, I would, I'm trying to think about what the best way to find that out. I know that they're not technically labeled that, uh, sheesh, I'm, that's a good question. That might have to be a, a brother, um, 800 number question. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing because Timothy, even if they can't answer on the phone, they'll send it to one of the educators that might be able to know that, but, uh, they'll know. I, cause I don't know that one. You guys had some good questions this time. <laughs> I gotta go back through my manual. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's one of those questions. Maybe it just, we need to do a little more research cause it's, it's not something I've used right off the top of my head. 
yeah, same here. But that was a good question. So you, if you didn't see the 800 number, scroll back through the comments. Oh, thanks, Josie. We love you too. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Cindy. Oh, hey, speaking of. Thank no, you. There are split designs. You need software to split design. Cindy, thank you, brother. Well, good job, Cindy. Brother Brand Ambassador <laughs> at our rescue. That's right. All right. We have to use software to split them. Okay. All right. Awesome. Cindy, hope your stuff's going well. <laughs> All right. Cindy, it's always a wealth of information, by the way. If you've never seen her show, it's on Tuesdays, uh, Software Shut-In. She is the software guru. <laughs> Absolutely. Heather, Check it out. This is awesome. Do you have any last minute things that you want to share? I didn't mean to bring us like all of a sudden it's like oh, giant. <laughs> I was like, I back in. No, no, that's no problem. I don't think so, Angela. I hope that I've pretty much covered everything, but it's just always fun to share and talk to everyone. It sure is. And again, if you have questions, you can leave them down below. Otherwise, the schedule for the rest of the week, I can't believe it's already Thursday. I cannot believe June is almost over. Where is the summer going? Exactly. It's almost 4th of July. Oh, gosh. So Saturday, there will be another episode of It's So Easy. I think it's the last of season 15. So next week, we'll start a brand new season that has not been out yet, except for a few small places. So that's Ooh. next week. So that's Saturday at noon. And then next week, we're that. all back together again, I believe, at noon on Tuesday. I don't have my calendar in front of me, but you know the show. <laughs> Just go to Brother uh, Sewing, and you can also sign up for the newsletter, by the way. Their email is right below, and then you'll get a notification to remind you of all the events. So, Perfect. Heather, great to see you. Good to see you, Angela. Thank you for having me, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Yes. Uh, summer is – some. you know, you could be at the beach, but that would not be – be any fun watching us, right? You could be on nope. your phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Brother Sewing and Crafting family, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.